Aloha, welcome to Condo Insider, our weekly show about association living, primarily condo associations. I think it's interesting to note that about 38% of our population lives in an association here in Hawaii, and um, there's a lot to learn. So this is for boards of directors and homeowners alike, and uh, we welcome questions. If you wanna call our hotline at 808-374-2014, we'll try to answer your questions. But, you know, now the last couple of weeks, we spent a lot of time on the legislature and a lot of the bills out there. And we're not going to go into that. Uh, I would like to encourage all of you to donate to Think Tech Hawaii. You may have seen a little flash note at the beginning because uh, they do a wonderful service on wonderful topics. And uh, I know I've personally donated as well as Hawaii Council of Community Associations. And these types of programs bring a lot of insight to our residents in Hawaii on topics that sometimes rarely get discussed. So I know even a few bucks, you know, it helps them a lot because all nonprofits do that. But today, this is an exciting show for me. It's very rare, maybe never, we have a show where we're going to offer you something for free that may save you money. One of the things that I've always been proud of in Hawaii, and when I first heard of this initiative, I I said, that's never going to happen, is our state's objective to be energy free by the year, I want to say 2040, but I'm not exactly sure. 2045. 2045, our guest says. So I invited today a good friend of mine, CEO of Shifted Energy, Forrest Frizzell, to talk about a program that's being launched July 1 for multifamily, which is condo associations, high rises primarily, although it would work for large townhouse groups or whatever, a program that would do two things. Number one, it'll provide an instant credit on your electric bill there every month. And number two, potentially reduce your electric bill. It's a very novel, creative technology program. So, Morris, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thank so, you for having me. Tell us a little about you and your company and, and give us a general overview. Yeah, um, so I, I live in Waimanalo, Hawaii, a proud graduate of the University of Hawaii. I've been in technology my whole career, love tech. I, I did five years in um, split between state and um, city and county government. Uh, I worked for Hawaii Gas for a utility. And uh, a friend of mine was the founder of Shifted Energy, Olin Lagon, and he'd been working on this idea for a while, had some prototypes, and he asked me to come on board and help to commercialize it, get some finance money and get some pilots going. And, you know, I'd always wanted to do a startup. And so I decided, uh, throw caution to the wind and, and let's do it. And so what, and I want to get into more detail on this, but in general terms, what is the objective, the, the kind of the global objective of Sifted Energy? I know you're a startup, you're gonna have a startup program for, for new subscribers. Uh, what is the what is it generally doing? Right. Well, so we're uh, the idea is global. There's 600 million electric storage water heaters globally. Oftentimes, they're found in multi-unit dwellings like condos, apartment buildings, townhomes, and there's just not a lot of opportunity for utility-scale programs in these regions. So you think solar, solar, solar plus storage, electric vehicles. Typically, those are sold to the single-family homeowner. Um, and condos, apartment buildings, and especially renters are kind of left on the side out of, with those type of programs. But they all have a, a device that's grid connected. It's already attached to the grid that is the first or second largest consumer of energy in the home. That's the water that's heater. That's the water heater. And so what is your, how's your company tackling that problem in general terms before we get into the specifics? Right. It, and, and so because we're tech guys, we, we took a, a little bit of a different approach. And, and so we use uh, machine learning to understand how each family uses their water heater. And we do that so it, we get a unique profile so we can maximize the amount of capacity we get for that water heater um, without affecting access to hot water. And so if you think about one water heater, uh, maybe it's a kilowatt, it's not a whole lot, but then you magnify that, you aggregate that up and you do 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 water heaters, you're able to control megawatts of energy. So in the case of Hawaii, 
if we want to use all that rooftop solar that we're creating, turn on those water heaters during the opportune time of day from 10 to 2. That way you can shut them down from 5 to 9 when you're not producing uh, solar, avoid burning fossil fuel, and you drastically can reduce that demand curve in the evening. So you, I'm a, I'm a lay person when it comes yeah. to technology, you know. So what you're doing is hooking up a device to a water heater, and it kind of learns your individual habits on when you're using hot water, when you're not using hot water. Yeah. And then it regulates when it turns on and turns off the water meter. So you have hot water when you need it, but at the same time, you're not paying the heat water when you don't need it. Right, and, and we've really engineered our product to be invisible to the ratepayer. And so our controller, it's small, it splices in line, completely agnostic to the size, the make, the model of the water heater. And we're just qu in the, quietly in the back, we use cell, cellular Internet of Things technology for communications. So we don't need to borrow your Wi-Fi. We don't need to run any cables. Um, and it's, so it's really simple for the, for the um, homeowner to participate or the renter. And it, it's a 15-minute install. We're in and we're out. So you have a little device. How, how big is little? Just in your hand. Yeah, it's, you know, it's about, uh, I would say, four inches by about seven inches. It's, it's really small. A little device. It's kind yeah. of, in a way, a little mini computer because it's understanding what you're doing you're your own personal profile, so you're not stuck with everybody's got to be the same in your building. Right. And in the meantime, it transmits the data to... Um, Our cloud software. Your cloud software. And in the meantime, it's connected to turn off your electricity to the meter at the appropriate times. Right. And, and, and so we're working with the utility then to kind of dance with their needs. Because if you, know, you think about especially renewable energy, it dances, right? Sun and wind are, are, are dancing like this, and you need to be able to match that. And that's exactly what we're doing. Think about it as, as a battery, but it's thermal. It's a thermal battery. Uh, is this something you have to seek approval from HECO or the PUC? Where does that stand? Because you know, we're very regulated in that industry. So, I mean, I mean, is this on your own, or do you have the government and, right. and, the, and the utility behind you? Right. Well, our business model here in Hawaii, so we, we're in, we have agreements in place with Hawaiian Electric, we're waiting on approval from the Utility Commission. We're going to do about 2,500 units, um, about 2.5 megawatts here in Hawaii. So we'll actually go out, we'll recruit, we'll install, and then we'll aggregate that capacity and we'll sell that back to the utility. The utility wants that um, because it's a, it's a cheaper form of energy than burning fossil fuel, and it gets us to our 2045 goal. Now the PUC and... And the electric company are on board with what you're trying Absolutely. to do. What you want Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I really like to give Hawaiian Electric kudos. It's, it's easy to beat up on them, and a lot of people do. But as a startup, we've done multiple pilot projects with them. They've been incredible partners of ours. I mean, really, our, our, our company is where it's at because, you know, they've been willing to work with a local company. Um, and, and we've been able to now scale that into a, a, you know, a commercial space. So we, I, I give a lot of credit to One Electric. And, and before I go to some other questions, I just want to summarize something yeah. and have you correct me if I'm wrong. Of course. So they would call your company. Once this is approved by the mm -hmm. PUC, so you're looking for like a July startup of this kind of a thing. And, and their building would say, we'd like to participate in your program. Right. And you, know, you would come install devices in each unit uh, it costs them nothing to have this installed. This is all free. Right. That little device, that little computer would be connected to your cloud software, turning on their hot and cold water to the extent of when you're heating it uh, in, in line with their habits within their own unit. And at the same time, because they agreed to participate, they would get it between a 3 and $5 a month credit on their electric bill. Exactly, and so typically we'll reach out to the property owner or the property manager and we'll work with them to get access to the building and we'll then work with their either security or their building maintenance. And it's, it, it, multi-unit really facilitates rapid scale because we can do a, a notice, we're going to be there, and we typically we go door to door, we do our installs, we're in and out in 15 minutes. Um, and one of the things that we've, you know, we've pulled a bunch of property managers and owners. So above just the, you know, the bill credit, we'll do a courtesy check of the thermostat and the heating element. This is something that nobody pays attention to. But if one of those are bad in your, in your um, water heater, 
it's not working optimally and you're, you're going to be ultimately paying more in your electric bill. So we'll optimize that um, along with the bill credit, um, along with some leak detection and some other um, benefits. Um, uh, and then, like I said, rapid scale in multi-unit buildings. And now phase one, you've talked about 2,500 units. So I assume, because you asked, out of 100 to 150, 200 units of building, you're not talking about more than 10, 12, 15 buildings to, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands of buildings that, that, yeah. that would qualify for this. Yeah, I'm assuming that that's like a startup phase. You want to do more. That's not the end of the, uh, the program. Absolutely. Our goal here in Hawaii is 100,000. Um, Hawaiian Electric will do subsequent uh, um, yearly uh, contracts like the one that we're working on right now. And so each year we're going to go out and we're going to recruit and we're going to install until, yes, we would like every dumb electric water heater um, in the state to be smartly, intelligently controlled and, and um, empower our community to be part of the process of getting off of fossil fuel generation. So let's just say I had a building of 200 units who wanted to do this. And they called you and they, and they said, this is a good idea, let's do it. About how long to, to get an approval and, to, and to really get their program started? Is that like uh, a couple of weeks, a month, years? Yeah, the, well, the installation process is, is fairly quick. Um, like I said, it's about a 15 minute install. We would, we would typically schedule to do it all at one time. So maybe we'd be there for a week and a half getting all the installations done. Um, we would collect some information from the ratepayer. Typically, well, primarily we need their account number, their Hawaiian Electric right. account number. Um, and then we, we sign them up. And as soon as the program goes live, which is going to be sometime th this year, um, they, boom, they start receiving their, their bill credit and we can just keep replicating that throughout the, um, the island. So let's just assume it's approved by the PUC with the final legislative regulatory phases in place. And so I called you and, and, my, and our board voted yes to do that and we notified the residents. Is, is it about a month before it gets installed or two months or yeah, six months? Or? Yeah, I, no, I would say a couple months, right? We would, we would there's some planning, just the, finding that the, the, the day that works best to come and start those installations. Um, depending on our manufacturing schedule, how many controllers do we have in, in the shop? But it's, it's really, it's pretty quick. So if I partnered with you, you wanted to do those 200 units, um, we would have it signed up and, and done within a couple months. Okay, well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a short break. I'm with Forrest Fazell, the uh, CEO of, uh, of Shifted Energy, talking about ways you can save three to five bucks a month for doing absolutely nothing and support our state goals on energy renewables. So we'll be right back in a minute. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Well, I was just watching that commercial for Beyond the Lines, and they're talking about, it's a great program, by the way, interviewing these people who it achieved greatness, and I started to feel badly I haven't been invited to appear on the show yet, but I guess I'll get over that in, in time. <laughs> but we're with Forrest Frizzell right now talking about renewable energy, and uh, maybe it's because I'm in the condo industry, you know, in the condo industry, most of us think we need a psychiatric care. Right. You know, it's a tough business. <laughs> Try the startup industry. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. So anyway, I just want to review a couple of things. So you have a program, that basically will provide a credit in your electric bill for these multifamily units that will help us become more energy efficient as a state, if not the world, by controlling your demand for 
electricity to heat your water meter by using it when you need it, which kind of makes sense. And we've said that if you sign up, it's free for the installation, no cost. Is there any maintenance things that have to come in once a year, every other year? Or is this all driven by technology you know if you have a bad meter or a bad reader or whatever? Yeah, no. Uh, so our, our controllers are built to last at least 10 years. Uh, because we're using a cell chip, we don't, need, we don't have to worry about your Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. What's also great about our technology, if the controller fails, um, your water heater will not fail because we, we wire it normally closed. And that's a really important um, thing to think about because we don't want anyone to experience having a cold shower because that's just not a good experience. And, and then that allows us you know, say a, a controller fails, we can wait until we have a dozen or so, and then we can go out and we can replace them all at one time. It just makes it easier from a maintenance standpoint. So is the controller always learning, for lack of a better word? So if all of a sudden you changed your habits, that it would adjust accordingly? Yeah, that's an excellent question. We actually go out four times a day, and so we're always relearning the environment. And that can be seasonality. It could be because you go on vacation. And, and that's actually a, what we, a area we haven't touched on. Say you go on vacation, we'll sense that and we'll automatically um, shut down the tank until we see usage again. And so we'll learn these patterns. We'll learn your family typically takes three showers in the morning and, and two showers in the evening. And that helps us to um, have, that, again, that unique profile for how your family is using the water heater. So um, we can maximize how we're using it, but not give you a cold shower. Now, are you able through this process at all to, to identify maybe issues with the water heater, its thermostat and things as you're going along that you're seeing that it's not being efficient? A couple, yeah, so we've seen this in um, a, a couple different ways. We send a signal to turn on and we'll, we'll see that a thermostat doesn't engage and so we can, we, we'll have an alert for that. We've detected leaks. Um, actually, we had a, 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 a controller on a friend of mine's home and his brother kept calling me, telling me he was getting a cold shower, and I was, I was promising him that we weren't running any, any kind of testing. And so we finally just went out there to just check on it, and it turns out they had a leak. Um, and we helped them find that leak, and we, we potentially saved them thousands of, of dollars. And so they were actually really grateful for us, because they would have never have known that they ha had that leak. And the one thing I think you said, I'd like to just explain a little bit more about this, that if the association agrees you're now installing the controllers, Tell me, just repeat a little bit more about the courtesy check you're doing and why that's valuable. Yeah, it's, it's valuable because so it, almost every water heater typically has two thermostats and two heating elements, and nobody pays attention to those. So if you have a, a thermostat or a heating element that's gone out, your water heater is now not optimized and to heat correctly, and so you're going to be burning more energy than you should be. And so we'll come in... We'll replace those if need be to help optimize the water heater in, in the way that it's you know, working efficiently. As my wife tells me, I know nothing about nothing. So, <laughs> so, so I, I think I'm smarter than that. But to me, uh, my perception is this is a big problem. I don't think people look at their water heaters very much other than they expect hot water when they take a shower or do the dishes or whatever it may be. And... And so I would suspect that there's lots of controllers that aren't ideal and optimum, operating in an optimum, that a lot of us are paying the heat water we aren't using, and we just keep it heated all the time just in case. And, and I say paying for it, we're paying for it in different ways, you know, just because you're, you're certainly, it's in your electric bill. I know your, your company doesn't promote utility savings, but there's potentially utility savings out of this. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So a couple of things there. So most people don't realize you're actually supposed to drain your tank once a year, and, and that helps to prolong the life. Um, and, and another thing to think about, if there's a hurricane and you lose water, you can actually drink the water in your, in your water heater. You, you need to boil it first, but just a, you know, a safety tip out there. But, but absolutely, people aren't paying attention. The water heater is the first or second largest consumer of energy in the home. So if you're, if you're not running AC, then your water heater is your largest consumer of energy in the home. And if it's not optimized, like you, know, you optimize your car, you optimize all these other things, these cost centers in your life, but nobody pays attention to this hidden device that's sitting in your home, but it's, it's, you're paying for it every month. Well, see, I learned something new, because you see you said you should drain your water heater once a year. 
I thought it was once every 15 years. <laughs> and I'm, I'm draining mine in about two weeks from now because I'm putting a new water heater in. Yeah, so, yeah but, once uh, a year, you're supposed to drain your, your yeah. tank. Well, I'm replacing my water heater, not because there's anything wrong with it, but because I'm in the property management business, I've, I've learned I'd rather do it now before I have a burst and I have an insurance claim and all those things on top of it because, uh, believe me, after about 15 years, you're, yeah, it's about the useful life of a water heater before you have a risk of a leak. So I'm, I'm putting that into effect. I notice in your, in, in your thing, you say you track all this data, and, and I, I'm just reading this, and it says um, uh, monthly reports. You provide those to the owner, or is it to the association, or? So we can, and um, the, the utility can also provide um, some usage data for the building, and they can do some comparisons with um, other buildings in the area. And, you know, you can't measure what you, you, you can't understand what you can't measure, right? And, and we feel that getting these reports in your hand, and you can actually see it, it really helps you to, to kind of paint a picture of how you can be more energy efficient, more energy cautious. And, um, and I think that's a great way to engage with your tenants or your, um, if it's a, you know, a condo association, then your, your homeowners. Because um, again, you, you, you just don't know. Um, but it, when, if you have the data, then you can go out and actually make some changes. So I know associations in some cases have, uh, where everybody has their own electric meter, most common associations, they all have a central water meter, but the electric meter is individual, and sometimes it's a central meter for everybody, and they just sub-meter it and build it out accordingly. Does it work for both types of buildings? Right, and so the master meter, um, you'll, you, it would, um, you would receive the credit, you would be a much larger credit, because um, you're gonna get all that capacity, all that kilowatt usage to one meter. And so then it would be up to the building owner or the building manager to decide what they want to do. Do, you want, do they want to use that to you know, do repairs or bring down the monthly association fee? But that bill credit would go to the single um, rate payer. Yeah, I think I haven't thought this through. I know we're going to be talking about some test buildings with our company. Um, whether you would want to take the fee and have the unit owner see the $5 credit or the $3 credit, to encourage participation and understanding why we're doing this program, mm -hmm. you know. And certainly, occasionally issuing a report to the unit owners how it's affected, right. you know, what's, what's going on and only promote your business and, and validate it. And um, so what kind of reception you get when you're going out there with people? Right, and, and I think that's, that's important. We do a lot of surveying. Um, we've done that, this through our pilot projects and whatnot. And, and even above the bill credit, what people have said over and over again, that the fact that they know that they're helping the state achieve its energy goals. We were the first state in the nation to set a 100% renewable energy target. And that is really awesome. And that's an incredible thing to think about and be proud of. But oftentimes, you know, if you're in an apartment, and especially if you're a renter, how do you do that? You're not getting solar, you're probably not driving an electric vehicle, you're not getting batteries, home batteries. But here's a way to participate, and people feel really positive about that, and they want to participate. And, um, and so this is just another way to get people engaged and excited about where they live. And, and I think that's really important, is having pride in where you live. And this controller, the device, I'm, I'm assuming it's hardwired into your utilities. You don't have to change batteries or anything like that. Yeah, it, we, it's, it's hardwired in, no, no battery yeah. changes. Right? And there, those things use very little electricity. Yeah. Right, and we've done studies to make sure that we're not adding any load uh, to, the, to the bill, and we're not. So, if, you know, we're getting near the end of our show. So if people want to, if they're interested in this, this association, what should they do? They should send you an email, contact you, say, I know you're, we, we were talking earlier that we're looking for maybe starting some of these in July, but, um, you know, the reality of it is you said you have an initial capacity of 2,500 units. So if you want to get in early, you should probably sign up early, I would think. Absolutely. So you could email me, Forrest, um, at shiftedenergy.com, and I'm uh, Forrest with one R. Uh, that'd be the best way, and I would love to come out and, and uh, meet with any of the property managers, meet with um, tenants and homeowners, and discuss more about the program. So that's Forrest with one R at shiftedenergy.com. And you also have the ability to contact us here at ThinkTech 
if you didn't write that down or don't know and say, please send us the contact information and we will get it to you. But I would say in general, as you summed up, this is supporting our energy goals, which is wonderful. Number two, you're getting a credit, which is wonderful. Number three, you potentially are reducing utility costs. And I say that, it may not be your personal electric meter, but certainly by reducing our demand of purchasing fossil fuels, certainly helps maintain the rate basis for a Hawaiian electric company. Yeah, absolutely, especially you know, so if you can reduce that. There's pluses to get up to the technology age and, and, and have your board consider this program. I know that our company is going to send out notices to our major clients and that, would this, that this criteria fit into and suggest they take a look at this at their board. And, um, and so uh, uh, I think it's a wonderful program we should be very happy to. Is there any downside to this? Not participating. Yeah, that's the big downside, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but no, it's, it's, it's really seamless. It's invisible. You won't even know it's there other than the, you know, the 15 minutes that we're doing the installation. Um, you won't even know that you're, we're there. And to all of our guests out there, you can think about Think Tech Hawaii and Condo Insider and said, hey, for nothing, for free, they bought a way to save me $50, $60 a year not for one year, but forever more, and also do good for our environment. So I want to thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. I'm always excited by your program, and I know I'm going to beat on you to come make a presentation to our property managers. Happy. And to all about you in condo world out there, you should talk to your board and talk about this program and email Forrest, and he can send you a a flyer on this program, and he's willing to come out to your condo board and discuss it with you. I think this is the wave of the future, and think about getting in on the ground floor. In the meantime, I would tell you that we're going to have Condo Insider again next week, and we're changing some of our formats, so you're gonna see a little bit more of like case studies of reviewing what happened in a real condo case and a learning curve, as well as some more educational material on on the new laws as well as the existing laws, your ethics, responsibilities, things along that line. So on that note, I want to thank each and every one of you for giving up your valuable time to watch Condo Insider, and we will see you next week, and aloha.